Is there a best mission of Red Dead Redemption 2? It's an entirely subjective question, and one where the answer really depends on any one particular element that is considered a higher priority to each individual player. Gameplay, story, characters, humour, memorable events, music, cinematography. I certainly have largely different answers for each, sometimes just depending on the day, or on which particular character I'm vibing with at that particular time. But a pretty common answer to this question of the best mission in the game is Blood Feud's Ancient and Modern, the assault on Braithwaite Manor. In fact, I think it really fits a lot of the categories I mentioned before, so it's no wonder it's considered so highly. So let's break it down. Firstly, I think it's important to understand the context of where the characters and the player are by the time this mission starts. I think the preceding mission is where the game's story really starts to take a turn, where the stakes become more real. Arthur, Bill, Micah and Sean are ambushed by the Greys and Rhodes, right in the middle of town. Sean is killed, Bill is held up at gunpoint, and Arthur and Micah are forced to kill dozens of people. It's not the first time the player has been ambushed, not even the first time in this chapter that they've barely escaped in fact, but it's the first time a gang member dies in the game since the opening cutscene, so the ambush stings even more. When you return to camp, you immediately discover that Jack has been kidnapped by the Braithwaites. And this one really stings. Jack isn't a member of the gang who is aware of the consequences of his actions, like Arthur or even Sean. He's a young boy forced to be raised in this setting, and he's an incredibly sweet and innocent boy at that, based on our experiences with him at camp and on our fishing trip. So I think it's safe to say that the player, as Arthur, is angry. So too is the rest of the gang, and not just Dutch, Hosea and John, but Bill, Javier, Charles and Lenny. Seeing them volunteer to help rescue Jack, without question, is almost heartwarming, as twisted as the situation may be. It's powerful and hopeful. And the mission really feels like the conclusion of this chapter going back and forth with these two families, considering we've just killed off the Greys, and we're about to do the same with the Braithwaites. On the ride to Braithwaite Manor, there's some negativity about the lack of gold between the two families. Christ's sake, Hosea! After all that, another perfect scam! We underestimated them. But what I find notable is how quickly Dutch shuts down the negativity, spinning it into a rallying cry to maintain the group's enthusiasm, even if what he's saying does feel a little egotistical and even delusional considering recent events. No, they underestimated us. Enough talk. There is no point arguing how we got here. This is where we are. And we are going to fix it. So come on! I think a pretty significant reason this mission is so highly praised is this shot alone, and fair enough too. The way the camera pulls back to capture the full group walking up to the house is unforgettable. The framing of the house at the end of the line of trees is beautiful, and to use it to capture the gang unified at perhaps their strongest moment is an incredibly smart choice. Rockstar knew they were cooking with this one. The music is similarly perfect as well, certainly not surprising to anybody familiar with Woody Jackson's other work. It sounds great as you're riding up to the manor, of course, with the drums kicking in to accompany the sounds of the horses. Once you get closer to the manor, though, the drums fade away, adding more tension to every word that's spoken. And then, once you begin to approach the building, you are graced by the beautiful vocals of Petra Hayden. It's perfect for this scene. It feels like something from a Western film. The vocals especially remind me of Ennio Morricone's phenomenal track The Ecstasy of Gold from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, featuring the beautiful vocals of Edda Del Orso. It's perfect, and a testament to Woody Jackson's already obvious talent. The gameplay in this mission isn't really unique. In fact, it's very similar to the preceding mission. Shoot these people, move up, shoot more people, move up, and so on. But there's nothing inherently wrong with that, it feels logical, perhaps even thematically appropriate. Especially considering that this time, we're the ones performing the ambush. We're not cornered and forcing our way out. We're on the outside, forcing our way in. Unless you perform poorly, I suppose, there's not really any point where it feels like we're on the losing end of the gunfight. They certainly throw a lot of firepower our way, but the gang holds strong. We're killing them, not fighting for our lives. And after fighting our way in, we're left only with the matriarch of the Braithwaite family, Catherine Braithwaite. And since she isn't giving us any answers, Dutch is left with the only logical option, burn down the plantation house. Death and murder aside, it's good to see the gang work together so effectively here. 
Dutch and Hosea almost have a shorthand, taking turns to interrogate Catherine before both realising they're getting nowhere. Dutch asks Arthur a question, with full knowledge that the answer will only upset Braithwaite further, which is the point. Any more of her sons to deal with? No, I reckon they're all dead. <laughs> and Hosea and John efficiently set the house alight with perfect timing, just as the gang surround Mrs. Braithwaite to get the answers out of her. And perhaps most interestingly about the end of this mission, after they get the information they need, they simply walk away. They got what they came for, either to get Jack back or get information regarding his whereabouts. They very easily could have killed her, out of revenge for kidnapping Jack, or simply to stop her from retaliating, which despite the death of her sons and destruction of her manor, she certainly still had the power to do. But instead, they left her. They knew that leaving her with the pain of having her sons killed and manor destroyed was probably more emotionally devastating than killing her. And ultimately, it seems they were right. Again, general death and murder aside, this I think is the Vandalin gang at their strongest in the game, not just in terms of their actions and behaviour, but their values too. They don't just walk up and murder each and every member of the Braithwaite family without cause. They kill who they need to kill to get the information, and to defend themselves of course, and then walk away. I mean obviously they're not heroes, you could really argue in the wider picture that they're the opposite, but in the context of the game, a story solely focused on a criminal gang fighting against several other criminal gangs, to see them know when to walk away, and seemingly do so in unison and agreement, is to see them operating at their best. One thing that comes to mind when I think of this mission is how it contrasts to one of the last ones of Chapter 4, Revenge is a Dish Best Eaten. Conceptually, they're quite similar. Towards the end of the chapter, the gang is betrayed, this time being set up at a robbery at a trolley station, so they ambush a mansion and drag out its owner. As it starts though, it immediately feels very different for several reasons. First of all, the gang is not united on this one. They're not all gunning to get revenge. In fact, Hosea is actively opposed to it, perhaps more than I've ever seen him opposed to anything Dutch has ever done. You'll damn us all. Even Arthur doesn't seem too confident about it, questioning Dutch even after agreeing to help. This move on Bronte, is it for the bank job or revenge for what happened at the trolley station? Once the mission starts too, the approach is very different. Last time Dutch rallied the troops, praising the gang as the best and getting them confident about what was to come. This time all he does is make fun of Bill, and while it initially gets a few chuckles, it soon turns more antagonistic. Even Arthur, again, calls it out as odd. Interesting way you boys gotta prepare for a killing. And Dutch laments wasting his efforts. I'm sorry I wasted my life trying to teach you boys. Love you though I do. Not much of a rallying cry. Unlike last time, this doesn't really feel like a unified family on their way to get what's theirs. It feels more like, I don't know, almost like children obligated to help their father complete his obsessive task. They know what they're doing, and they might even understand why, but I'm not sure they fully agree with it, and Dutch seemingly makes no effort to convince them either. To me, it's a very different feeling to what is, on paper, a relatively similar mission. This extends to the gameplay too. Instead of storming up to the front and demanding what's ours, we sneak in through the back and ambush them. Mind you, that actually does make sense considering the resources Bronte has, especially when it comes to the law versus the Braithwaite's, who boasted large numbers but were mostly self-contained. But it still gives off a different vibe to the mission overall. I think these differences are emphasised by the fact that the majority of the gameplay is actually quite similar. Shoot these people, move up, search some rooms, shoot more people, until you find the person you're looking for. And just as the approach to the mansion was different, so too is the escape, as we're forced to shoot our way out. And while it is admittedly a little satisfying to overpower Bronte and carry him out like this, it really does feel like we're here solely to get revenge. Dutch likes to tell himself, and others, that it's about more than that, but even he admits that he's not entirely sure. Is it for the bank job, or revenge for what happened at the trolley station? Both. Neither. What does it matter? At the very least, we're certainly not here to rescue a kidnapped child like last time, that's for sure. Perhaps the most obvious difference between these two missions is the ending. Unlike with Catherine Braithwaite, Dutch kills Angelo Bronte by drowning him and feeding him to an alligator. Was killing him the only option? Well, he certainly would have had more power to retaliate than Catherine Braithwaite if they'd let him live. But even Dutch seems like he's not sure that he's going to kill him straight away. We gonna ransom you or what? Maybe he's just trying to intimidate Bronte, and the ultimate goal was to get him out of the picture anyway, but they might have had a better result if they kept him alive. 
Bronte knows a lot of powerful people, and I'm sure they could have extracted important information out of him. They did it with someone far less important back in Chapter 1, kidnapping Kieran to get information out of him about Colmo Driscoll, so it's certainly not out of the question for them. But Dutch kills him instead, and in a brutal way. I think it was largely a reaction to Bronte insulting him. You are nothing. You do nothing. You mean nothing. You stand for nothing. Dutch knew that killing Bronte was on the table, and Bronte not taking him seriously was enough to tip him over the edge. And honestly, I think Bronte's death was inevitable. I mean, they could have just taken Hosea's advice and never come near in the first place, but it's a bit too late for that at this point. But to do it in such a brutal way, to the point where even other members of the gang were questioning it, really seems to demonstrate Dutch's mindset at this stage. Even the music makes that clear. It's hard locked to this cutscene, even if you mute the music in your options. I think it also demonstrates a big difference between this mission and Blood Feuds Ancient and Modern. In that mission, the gang was united with a necessary goal, and they left after getting what they needed. In this one, the gang was less unified with a goal that they weren't even agreed on, and they ended up killing him immediately anyway. I think the breakdown of the gang started a long time before this, probably before the game even starts, in all honesty. But the contrast between these missions really emphasizes that breakdown. Instead of seeing Dutch rallying the troops, approaching as a unified gang in style, and leaving their target with no choice but to quit, we see him mocking and arguing with his troops, sneaking through the back at night, and killing their target before he could actually provide any useful information. We know that there have been occasions of it happening before, but it's after this point that Dutch really begins to unravel and kill indiscriminately, I think. And putting these missions against each other really shows where, why, and how that unraveling really began to take place. Two enjoyable, well-performed, narratively important missions whose basic synopses are similar, but whose actions and events demonstrate the development of characters over the course of a relatively brief period. There are several ways to show character development, and Red Dead Redemption 2 does it beautifully in many different ways. But, whether intentional or not, having these two missions contrast with each other, in the simplest of ways, was a fantastic way for Rockstar to show us the man Dutch is, or the man he might soon become.